Hey guys, Sneaky Snake here, Brothers in Arms, World of Warships, and today's video is a replay that I had playing in the Warships Supremacy League tournament with my buddies, the APOC or Task Force Apocalypse Clan. Warship Supremacy League, the screenshot you're looking at right now, this is the homepage of the website. It's hosting a non-for-profit, volunteer-run Warships gaming tournament. And it's very similar to the ranked playlist that we've been going through with ranked season six. However, you can use tier seven or tier eight ships, and it is nine versus nine instead of seven versus seven. It is very similar to the King of the Seas tournament that is going on on the EU server at this time. Flamu, I'm sure plenty of you know who that man is on YouTube. Very good World of Warships YouTuber from the EU. He's been posting a couple of videos detailing what the King of the Seas tournament is on his channel, so I highly suggest that you go check it out. There are plenty of streamers also that... Uh, try to get this Warship Supremacy League tournament out to the general public. And I gotta say, joining APOC, it's been a very good experience the last couple of weeks. And as you can see on the screen, we're five and three. Task Force of Apocalypse, Salt Queens is the team name in the gold division. There's four divisions, one on the Pacific, and then bronze, silver, and gold. So basically, you're divided into bronze, silver, or gold to, uh, based off of your skill level. And it's been a blast thus far to play in the Supremacy League. I got to tell you, the games are really intense, and I'm really excited to show you this replay that I'm about ready to. However, I want to take a look at a couple other screenshots. I had to use the snipping tool. Unfortunately, my NVIDIA was messing up a little bit, and I wasn't able to capture recordings from the desktop, so please bear with me here. Taking a look at the next screenshot, Season 4 Teams. Here's mine again, Task Force Apocalypse Salt Queens. You can see my in-game name is there. Plenty of other players on this uh, little snippet that I'm sure plenty of you have heard of. Das Bootcamp, Rathion, Electrician Zing, amongst a whole host of other guys. We have about, I think, 15 to 20 guys that make up each of the teams. So it's uh, certainly... There's plenty of people that we have in reserve to be able to play, and it's something that happens every Saturday night, Eastern Standard Time, around 8, 9 o'clock. Taking a look at the next screenshot here, these are the games that we played here on the 18th of March, or for me, the 19th. I'm in Japan, for those of you who don't know, so for me, the games take place in the morning. For them, it's on Saturday night, and we played against the Sun Tzu Warriors and the Seventh Fleet, and I highlighted our team name, of course, in yellow, and we were able to go a staggering 4-0. It's best of three series that you play against the other teams, and we were able to sweep both 2-0. And one of the games that I had playing against the Seventh Fleet is the subject of today's replay. Alrighty guys, taking a look now at the gameplay, I'm playing in the Chapai of the Tier 8 Soviet Light Cruiser, and we're playing some domination here on the map Fault Line. So, this game is going to be pretty sweet, it's a little boring at the beginning, but then it gets pretty intense about halfway into the battle. You can see here looking at the leaderboard, there's two carriers, both Shikakus, a couple of North Cows, and a Magi per side, two Bensons. The only differences, however, are in we have a Kiev and they have a Shiratsuyu, that dastardly tort boat, it is tier 7, but it can get 16 fish into the water uh, within 10 seconds if it uses its torpedo reload boost consumable, which is pretty terrifying when you're hiding in smoke screens. And the other big difference is the choice of cruisers. The enemy team deploys two Mikhail Kutuzovs. They have longer range than the Chapayev, and they have the ability to smoke. However, while I don't have as much of a range, I have the ability to radar. And so does the Edinburgh. That's the other cruiser that's on our team. However, I believe in this game he goes with smoke to help out and be another destroyer, so to speak, and help teammates get concealed. So at the beginning of the game, our uh, clan leader, I suppose, Das Bootcamp in the North Carolina, is telling everybody where to go. So our, our game plan here is to try and get Charlie right off the bat. So he tells me to go help out Lord Zath in the Kiev. He is a Wargaming community contributor. He is part of the clan, however. So our game plan is to go and try and cap Charlie, and if we're able to get that cap for free, that'll already give us a lead and an important advantage here at the beginning of the game. Reason being is that we're going to be able to get three points every few seconds or so, and it's going to force the enemy team to be extremely aggressive. So we're hoping that we're not going to run into too much out here. My buddy Electrician Zing in the Shikaku is sending out all of his planes well out in advance to try and scout. Now compared to ranked gameplay, this it's, it's a little bit more dynamic, it's a little bit more fast-paced. There is plenty of smoke that is used used in Supremacy League, but the gameplay does get pretty intense in various patches uh, while you're doing it because, you know, you're going up against some of the best players on the NA, uh, and, you know, each team has just quality all across the board. So, you know, you got to pay attention. The gameplay is not that static. It can be, but it gets pretty intense a little bit later on in the replay. 
So at this point, Zaf is capturing Charlie completely unopposed, and we've found the enemy carrier. You can see the fog battleship Yamato on the enemy team is tucked in against the island at I-7. And this is what the Kiev is extremely good at, as Lord Zath is about ready to get some long-range shots at the enemy Shokaku. It's a very good destroyer that operates by itself alone and is able to go around and be an annoying thorn in the enemy's side. So as he's about to capture objective Charlie, he's getting some long range shots at the carrier and that's extremely important. It's the same in ranked. If you're able to get the enemy carrier down and out at the beginning of the game, it's almost a guaranteed victory at that point. The enemy team would have to pull up their man pants extremely high to be able to get the victory. So with the threat at Charlie non-existent, I'm going to head over towards Objective Bravo. Now you can see how my team is deploying. They're basically in a line across the D-line. And what we're trying to do is inch and try and just sneak our way up into Bravo, inch by inch, yard by yard. And hopefully we'll be able to take care of the enemy ships that will inevitably be moving into the capture point. The score is 321 to 300, so at this point the enemy team is forced to take action. Because if no ships die, we would eventually win the game. Now, what is the Chapayev really good at? It has a 8-second reload, 1,252mm guns. The fire chance, when fully upgraded, can be 15-16%, and it's exceptionally good. Um, it has decent enough armor. It has access to defensive fire AA, and if you go with a full AA build like I do, you can get its rating almost up to 90 with over 6 kilometer range on its long-range 100mm guns. And then, of course, you have access to the radar, and that's the big thing here. I'm an important player in this game because the enemy team does not have a single ship that has radar, while I do. It has a range of 11.7 kilometers and only a duration of 20 seconds, but the fact that I have it is something that the enemy team has to be extremely careful about as the enemy Benson gets spotted in Objective Bravo. They're almost three-fourths, actually over three-fourths of the way capping it, so we got to try and reset this cap here. Now what you're going to see here is, like I said, a little bit, you can get some somewhat static here. Uh, my buddy Robido here in the Benson is moving up and he's going to lay a smoke screen for my buddy in the Amagi behind me and myself. Now destroyers like the Benson are extremely important. They're the core of your team because they provide those really large smoke screens and they're also able to go spot with their incredibly good detectability range. I do have shells coming in on the left. I was paying attention. One of the North Carolinas took a pot shot at me and I was able to get inside the smoke and now I am undetected. So at this point, this is an advantage for me because the enemy team does not have radar and I'm just waiting for my clanmates to tell me to pop the surveillance radar and once I do, you're gonna see all hell break loose on those enemy ships. Getting some good shots here on the North Carolina set a couple fires. Kutuzov gets spotted. Obviously, he is going to be the center of attention. Managed to reset the cap again. The enemy Amagi is also pushing it as well. You can see a trio of enemy ships is trying to get into that island right in the middle of the B cap. And it's a very bold move that they're making, considering that you can see plenty of the ships are already starting to take damage from the battleships that are aligned along the D line. And it's about at this point as the Amagi is going to go into the smoke that I'm going to pop my first surveillance radar. All the ships go undetected. I reset the cap yet again, and there we go. The radar is up, and boom, look at all the ships that get spotted. There's a, t a couple of Bensons in the cap with them as well. They're over halfway done capping it, so I'm obviously going to be shooting at the Benson. I get a very nice salvo of 3,600 on that Tier 8 American Destroyer, and you can see that those destroyers are, at this moment, freaking out and running away, and rightfully so. Uh, don't hit the Benson with my second shot, and I'm going to try to get those battleships burning in the cap, and hopefully they'll be able to uh, burn their damage con, and that's what's really important here. Now, again, you can see that the way we're situated, got the Benson in front of me to potentially spot torpedoes that will be coming this way, myself behind. We've got the Edinburgh and a North Carolina over there. The Edinburgh is providing smoke for him, and then behind me is the Amagi. He's moving around the island. And at this point, all I got to do is stay alive until my next surveillance radar. I'm getting targets of uh, shots at targets of opportunity, excuse me, while I can. But I still have a minute 35 until the cooldown. So that's something that, uh, you know, that, that's... That's the, that's the key thing in the Chapai. <laughs> Sorry for the stuttering. That's the key thing. Being able to stay alive in between your radar bursts. That's, that's the key thing because in this situation, I, I hold such an important role with the team that if I die, they're just not going to be able to get eyes on in that smoke, of course, until they get to suicidal ranges. So we're just trying to make our way into B. 
but I tell the guys, hey, got a minute and eight seconds now left on the radar, so I'm going to swing my happy butt all the way around, and by the time that I'm facing forward back towards the cap, we should be able to push in and take care of those enemy ships. The score is 498 to 277. The carrier on the enemy team has since been killed by Lord Zath. A very, very bold play, play right there to being able to take out their carrier, and at this point, it already feels like the victory is in the bag, but we still got to be careful. There is an enemy North Carolina moving off to Rabideau's side. He has since moved off to the south and is dropping a torpedo salvo on that enemy North Carolina. You can also see that our friendly Amagi has continued his push to the south and hopefully they'll be able to take out that North Carolina, which could potentially be a thorn on my side. But with the successful destruction of that tier eight American battleship, although I'll then, excuse me, be able to move unhindered into objective Bravo, get the radar up again, and then we'll be able to push in and sweep the enemy from the seas. The enemy Shiratsuyu gets spotted at 10 kilometers away. And we're going to take a look here at the free cam. North Carolina over there gets taken out by Rabido, a very nice torpedo salvo. And at this point, I launch my second radar of the game. And again, all the enemy ships are spotted. At this point, you can see the uh, priority target up at the top right. Everybody's aiming at me because I'm the radar cruiser. And that's something that you just have to deal with. I'm getting some shots now at the enemy North Carolina. I do manage to light a fire on the Amagi. He takes a pretty big hit. And I get some very generous RNG right there. Six penetrating hits on the superstructure. I tank 4,000 damage off the bow from this guy. Not really that bad. I was actually a very good result considering those are 16-inch guns. And I managed to take out the North Carolina and pick up my first kill of the game. 43,000 damage done. And it's at this point that I tell my guys that I'm going to push in and see what I can do. I get a second fire burning on the enemy Amagi. And once that smoke runs out at Objective Bravo, it is going to be a freaking turkey shoot. Thought Gore on the enemy team and his Kutuzov is off to my left and I continue to peek over at him to see if he's shooting at me. But once again, Lord Zath and his very long range on the Kiev is getting some very good harassing fire into that guy. So he is steadily losing his hit points. So as I'm about ready to start shooting at him, the enemy Benson appears straight out in front of me. It's 6.7 kilometers. Electrician Zing and his carrier is getting some very good spots. And then the Kutuzov appears at just under 2,000 health. I try to snap a shot off with the rear turrets. I am able to do so. I will hit a couple shells. Unfortunately, they all break, but then my buddy tucks Penguin behind me and the Edinburgh is able to take him out. And now the route is on. I got 41 seconds left until the radar, and I'm getting some really good shots here at the enemy Benson. You can also see that the Amagi and the Shiratsuyu are moving off to the right, and at this point, they're just making a completely bold charge at those uh, friendly ships that are over there, the Benson and the North Carolina. But it will be to no avail as our guys are just slowly pushing in and we're munching on them. I'm now getting ready to focus back on the enemy Benson. He is moving and maneuvering very wildly trying to get out of the way and I'm using my rear turrets to shoot at the Shiratsuyu and my forward ones to shoot at the enemy Benson. The Kutuzov continues to move around. He is um, now basically directly off the bow. I see the Benson torpedo from a long way off. Once again, Zing getting some excellent spotting uh, from the uh, friendly fighters that are over the cap. And it's only a matter of time until my rate of fire and hope for my buddies is going to be able to take care of this enemy Benson. So now I start to swing back a little bit left. This is really the only big mistake that I make in the game is I'm going to eat an unnecessary torpedo. Looking for a full broadside here on the Benson. There we go. Shots are out. Those three torpedoes just magically get spotted all of a sudden about a kilometer and a half away from me. Pick up my second kill. And now this Kutuzov is only on 3,600 health. I shoot my rear turrets in just as he disappears. The first salvo nets three hits. The second one gets four penetrations and a fire set. So now at this point, I'm looking to kill the enemy Benson over there. He's only on 2,100 health. The Kutuzov continues to burn. He's only on a couple hundred hit points. He's got to die here real soon. Looking for the kill shot right here. Right as I shoot, the Kutuzov dies, and then I pick up a double strike, although I didn't get the medal because it is the training room on the Benson, and I pick up two kills in quick succession for my fourth kill of the game. As my buddy Robido was telling me, he was laying smoke, but alas, we didn't need it, and the enemy team now only has one Amagi left. So you can see there, we were extremely patient. Being able to kill that aircraft carrier at the beginning of the game was exceptionally beneficial, and to top it all off, my sixth sense kicked in, and I stopped, and those torpedoes passed harmlessly off the bow of the ship. I light a fire on the Amagi, get the assisted base cap, and it's going to cap off a wonderful game here in the Chipayev. You can see the torpedoes coming in from the friendly Benson, and he bites the dust. What a game here by the clan on the map. Fault line. Alrighty guys, taking a look at the post-battle results, 82,000 damage done off of 172 target hits and 11 fires set, 3 planes destroyed, 4 enemy ships sent to the bottom, a pair of Bensons, a Kutuzov, and a North Carolina, 
four base defense ribbons, and of course the assisted base cap at the end of the game. Taking a look at the team score, I managed to the top of the leaderboard for Frags with four, of course. The pair of Bensons on our team doing very good stuff with the smoke and torpedoes, managed to get three kills combined, and then the Edinburgh and the North Carolina managed to get one frag apiece as well. We were able to deploy very good, the move to C was very good, we used the smoke, and we were able to just basically sucker the enemy team into Bravo, and then with the use of radar and the very efficient destruction of the carrier at the beginning of the game, our buddy Zing was able to put his aircraft over the objective, and once their smokes ran out, they got chewed up, spit out, and taken care of. So a very good game. We, again, ended the day 4-0, and swept both of the series, so it was a very good day playing. I really hope you guys enjoyed this replay, and in the comment section below, please tell me if you'd like to see more of these clan matches that take place every Saturday night, Eastern Standard Time. With that being said, the Sneaky Snake here for Brothers in Arms World of Warships signing off. Guys and gals, have a great day.